Hello everybody, and welcome to what may be the last episode in this introduction to scripting series. So we're finally getting to the point where we can start scripting things for Roblox specifically, and not just learning the basics of Lua itself, and you guys could actually get started on a real game right after this tutorial. This one is the last step. It's also vitally important, though, so please don't skip this. This is really, really important. All of the tutorials in this series have been extremely important if you want to be any good at scripting later on. So, today we're talking about nested blocks. We have talked about blocks of code quite a bit throughout this series, but today we're going to go over nesting them. Now, when you hear the word nest, you probably think of birds and you think of twigs and different things up in a tree somewhere. Technically, yes, that's the definition of a nest, but nest actually has two definitions. The first definition is use or build a nest like for birds and other animals. That's the one I was just explaining. The other one is to fit smaller objects or, well, Actually, it's not even just small. To fit objects inside of other objects. Okay? So, it's kind of like uh, when you have maybe, I don't know, Tupperware. And you have multiple objects, layer, like multiple like Tupperware containers. And they're the same size and stuff. And you just put them in together. And they kind of fit. Or cups. You put cups in together. I don't know. Whatever you do. Um, but it, nesting also means to put something inside of something else okay um, and typically it means the same type of something the same kind of thing um, and we're going to be doing this with blocks blocks of code so let's go ahead and come up with a scenario here let's go ahead and make a function function do something okay and it's going to take a parameter um, an argument and this argument is just going to be arbitrary we're gonna call it pie <laughs> okay uh, because I feel like eating pie right now and down here we're just going to say do something uh, cherry okay so what we could do is we could simply print I want a pie pie so I want a cherry pie, I want pumpkin pie, blah, 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 blah. Or what we could do is use an if statement within our function. <gasps> yeah, it's, it's actually possible. So we could do if pie equals equals pumpkin, then print, is it fall? Because, like, you know, you eat pumpkin pie typically during the fall, autumn season. Um... Else if pi equals equals cherry, which is technically the case here, then print why cherry? <laughs> because I, I've never heard of an occasion specifically meant for cherry pie, but hey, why not? So why cherry? Okay, let's look at this real quick. We have a function. Inside of a function, you put a block of code that happens every time the function is called. In this case, this block of code has two more blocks of code delimit like separated by an if and an else if, which we know only happens when their condition is true, and it only happens once when the condition is true, when it runs through the code. However, it will run through this if thing as many times as we need. So let's go ahead and let's just call this function multiple times. We're going to call cherry and then we're going to call pumpkin. Okay? So let's go ahead and clear this output. And now let's go ahead and press run. It says, why cherry and is it fall? Let's go ahead and look back at our script. Basically, what just happened here is we called do something and we fed in cherry so do something was like okay I need to initiate my block of code 
it did the first if because the if is in its block of code and it's like mm, no pie doesn't equal pumpkin sorry let's go to the next else if it goes to the else if and pie equals equals cherry yeah that's actually true so what do you want me to do from here and then we, it went through the next block of code and it printed out why cherry then we went through it again pumpkin okay yeah pie equals pumpkin print out is it fall and then skip the else if because we've already had a true condition and then that's the function so that's what just happened here we stacked we nested a block well two blocks of code inside of a greater block of code um, and that's essentially what we just did now what about loops though like we know that okay we've seen functions and we've seen ifs can a loop be put in a function yes yes it can so we're gonna do um, a while pi uh, I don't know while pi equals is, is greater than 8 here we're gonna change that to pi count while pi count is greater than 8 do print plenty of pi to share okay we're gonna go ahead and cut that out um, and let's change that to four. And over here, we're going to do an if. We're going to actually put another block in here. If pi count is greater than 10, then we're going to print out plenty of pi to share. There we go. And otherwise, else, we're going to print uh, pi count dot dot more pies. Okay? So, in this case, and we should do greater than or equal to 10. So, here's what's going to happen here. We're going to feed in a number to this new variable we're calling pi count up here. We, I just changed our parameter name to pi count instead of just pi. And then, while pi count is greater than 4, we're going to do pi count is greater than, if pi count is greater than or equal to 10, Okay, print out there's plenty of pi to go. If it's 9 or less, then we're going to print, because basically if it's less than 10, um, we're going to print the number of pies, more pies. And then at the end of this loop, we're just going to do pi count equals pi count minus 1 and print gave a pi away. And then wait. Okay, so down here, we're now going to switch out, do something cherry and we're going to give uh, we're going to give 21 pies away so now and we see gave a pie away plenty of pies to share plenty of pie just a whole bunch of plenty of pies to share and then we see nine more pies eight more pies seven more pies five more pies or six more pies five more pies so we see that it stops okay we see that it stops when it hits five more pies which means that if we go back to our script right here the pi count was a, it hit four and it stopped. It ran the function, went to pi count is greater than four, and it did this block of code for the while loop, then it did this block of code, then it did this block of code, and that finished out its block of code. And we see these stacks, these blocks of code stacked within each other here. Okay? So the essential point I want to make here is blocks of code are nestable. Okay, you can nest blocks of code within each other. There's virtually no limit to what you can do with nesting blocks of code together. You can do something, nest some blocks together, get it, do something, it, forget it. <laughs> nest some blocks of code together, put it all into one big block, and then you can run it as if it's just one block. And all of them will work together and piece together and fit together however you want. There's virtually no limit to what you can do. This opens up a brand new world of opportunities. Before, we would have just had to do a whole bunch of while loops. Like, okay, let's do a while loop for as long as the pine count is greater than or equal to 10. And then let's do a while loop for as long as it's greater than 4. Why would we want to do that when we could just do this? Or we also would have had to do, like, 
a whole new script for each one of these because we couldn't nest blocks together. We would have had to have a while loop, then a while loop, and then like define a variable somewhere and do all sorts of messy things when in reality you can just nest the blocks together, create one function that has a loop in it, and that loop can have two ifs in it, and then it can have extra stuff, and then there can be a for loop after it, and then there can be an if, and an if, and an if, and it's just endless what you can do, and it opens up a whole new world of possibilities for scripting and making things work really, really well and very very easily with multiple blocks you can write like six lines of code and you reuse those six lines of code five six seven times in a game and it's just it's gonna work every time if you do it right and it makes things so much easier so this is kind of just a simple here's one last piece of how everything can fit together that we've learned so far and we're going to put it all together here and we're going to make it amazing and now we can move on to bigger and better things with Roblox so I'm going to be having playlists um, and like tutorial series on different individual pieces to making Roblox games this is kind of the first one and only one that's going to be kind of a big overview of everything you need to know. Now we're going to move into more specialized things and you can learn everything you want really detailed and you can use it. All of these different things. I'm also going to have tutorials on specific uh, here's how to make this like I might have one for make a gun a laser gun or here's how to make this type of game stuff like that will be done. Your comments are definitely a big factor in this please go to the forum code.theorem.com slash forum uh, post some threads there of tutorials you want to see I'll try to make as many as I can so that we can make this amazing you now know all of the basics of scripting from this point forward it's just putting things together and learning how to use different things and now you can make any game you could possibly imagine so please go out there Make the game you've always dreamed of, put it into Roblox, and make it amazing. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Come back for the next couple series, and I will catch you guys later.